I think people like are human and yeah. they are faulted. Yeah, they, flawed. And they feel like deeply shamed about something yeah. in their life or they're yeah. or scared or embarrassed or like that they're not perfect. And and sometimes when you actually do allow people to see that you have that too, particularly if you've actually achieved something that maybe they want to achieve, that can feel That's connected. a really powerful thing. It's Thursday, November 18th. This is episode 190 of the Token CEO podcast. We are presented by Sports Research. Even though it's sweater season, I am desperately trying to work out again. I've gotten real lazy. It happens to be in the late summer, to be honest with you. Like, I just get real lazy. I'm like, eh, beach season is over. I don't need to wear a bikini that often. Sweater season is coming. But now that sweater season's here, I'm trying to look better and get into shape. I go to sportsresearch.com. I can get anything and everything I need to look and feel my best. You can do the same. Use code Erica at checkout for 25% off. That's sportsresearch.com, promo code Erica, and 25% off your order. All right, so we got a new set. We're, we're, we're not complete with the set. Life is a journey. I couldn't stare at a ripped up wall with a plug in the middle of it any longer. Shout out, Pete. Um, we have got new wallpaper. It's all sorts of women on it. Yes, they're Barbies. I'm probably going to get canceled for that. But I loved the idea of showing women in all different types of careers. And that's the vibe we're going for with a little bit of fuck off attitude. So that's how we do things here. Shout out to the team for putting this together and we'll keep making it better over time. All right, here's what we're doing this week. We've got headlines. We love ourselves some headlines over here. We're going to do a QA. and a we We're still doing the AMA on Instagram every morning, or most every morning, I should be honest. I'm not totally disciplined about that, but we're doing it often enough. Then we have Jenna Lyons joining us. I'm so excited about Jenna Lyons. I am committed to making Jenna Lyons my friend. I'm just going to put that out into the universe. She talks about all of her new endeavors. She talks about... Uh, what she learned in her in her tw- I think twenty seven year tenure at J Crew, um, and then she's going to give us some style tips as part of adulting. Who doesn't want style tips from Jenna Lyons? Like, come on! So this is a good value add episode for anybody who's keeping track. And with that, we're going to get into the headlines. All right, first headline: Disney Plus is set to become a metaverse platform. Everybody's moving into the metaverse, 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 metaverse. That's all you're going to hear read something that in the last year, the word metaverse has been used 128 times in investor presentations compared with seven times, a whopping seven times in the year prior. So the metaverse is the trend. What is the metaverse? You're probably asking. I just asked that before we did this. The metaverse, the best way I can describe the metaverse is virtual world. If you look at Roblox, right? Roblox to me is the perfect example of a metaverse. If you have watched an eight-year-old girl on Roblox, you see what the future is going to look like. Eight-year-old girls are in Bloxburg. They're in Tower of Hell. They're in all these worlds. In games like Bloxburg, they have their own house. They have jobs. They try on clothing. They They have total control of really anything and everything in their world, and it is completely virtual. They interact with other kids, but only in that virtual world. And if you try to pull a kid out of that virtual world, they are complete assholes. And I understand why, because in their metaverse, they're in total control. They run the house. They make all the decisions. Everything is to their liking. Everything is to their exact specification. And that is what the future is going to look like, where people are going to become more and more consumed and I would say sucked into worlds that have nothing to do with what is happening IRL. So real life is going to become frankly secondary to a virtual world and a virtual life that you live in online. So that's how I think about the metaverse. Um, There's all sorts of companies, obviously Facebook is getting into it, but uh, Disney Plus is also moving in that direction. And what Disney Plus is figuring out is how Disney characters, Disney brands, Disney IP, how they live in the metaverse. Do they create their own world? Could you live in Moana, right? You Could you live on an island in the South Pacific? Disney's worked with Epic Games to bring characters from their IP and their brands to life. You can imagine that this is going to play a role 
in sports, right? You don't just watch a soccer game. You live in a virtual world where you play a soccer game. It's kind of mind-blowing when you think about it. If you go, Rich Greenfeld had an interesting podcast this week on Roblox after Roblox had their investor day. In my opinion, Roblox is one of the biggest companies at the forefront of the metaverse. What I like about them is they don't spend all their time talking about the metaverse. They just are the metaverse. But you're going to see more and more IP-driven companies, maybe even Barstool Sports, figure out how to live in a virtual world and how to create virtual worlds where people not only consume your product, but they live in your product, they interact with your product, and they control your product virtually. All right, second headline, closer to home, happening in the real world. So John Gruden, former head coach of the Raiders, is suing the NFL and Roger Goodell, saying they unlawfully forced him out of the Vegas Raiders job. He resigned as a coach from the Raiders last month after outlets published homophobic, misogynistic, and racist emails from when he was at ESPN. The correspondence was between Gruden Gruden, who was at ESPN at the time, and the and the now Washington Football Club, Gruden is suing the NFL and Goodell, saying that they leaked the emails to force him out of the job, and that they pressured the Raiders to fire him. Additionally, Gruden is asserting that the NFL and Goodell threatened the Raiders that unless they fired him, they would release more emails and more documents containing homophobic, racist, and misogynistic comments made by Gruden. So additionally, Gruden is showing damages. He lost a sponsorship deal with Skechers. He was pulled from appearing in the Madden NFL 2022 video game. And then obviously his future employment is pretty much shot to shit. All right. So the big thing here that Gruden is raising is of all of the emails that the NFL has been going through, I think there's something like 650,000 emails that came out of the NFL's investigation of the Washington Football Club. Only Gruden's emails were released. So of those 650,000 emails, which I'm sure there was a whole bunch of stuff in there, Only Gruden gets leaked to the press. He's seeking unspecified damages. He's highlighting seven claims against Goodell and the NFL. And he's seeking not only punitive awards, but coverage of his attorneys. All right. Next up, Substack. Barry Weiss, my girl, is on Substack. I love that Barry Weiss. So quick shout out, Barry Weiss. You should subscribe to her Substack if you haven't already. Um, Substack said on Monday of this week that they've Uh, that they have surpassed over a million paid subscribers. I wonder how many of those are berries. Um, This is up from 250,000 subs last December. I think Substack is really interesting because what you're seeing is all sorts of journalists who've either been canceled, kicked out from the left, kicked out from the right, or they've become disillusioned with mainstream media. They are going to build businesses on Substack. What Substack is, it's a CMS, which is a content management system. It's a publishing tool. It enables independent journalists, thought leaders, writers, anybody really, to be able to publish content and to be able to charge subscriptions to that content. Substack takes a pretty hefty 30% fee on that, which I think is going to raise the question of how they keep people like Barry on the platform. Um, But it's very interesting to see that the platform itself is reaching pretty immense scale. The other thing that's interesting about Substack is it's really a self-serve platform. So Barry can charge one thing for her newsletter. I could charge something different for my newsletter. Shout out, my newsletter is free. It's called Things You Missed, and you can find it on my socials. Uh, What's also interesting about Substack is that they have reported that the top 10 writers on Substack are collectively generating over $25 million in annual revenue. A year ago, the top 10 publishers on Substack made $7 million. So if you're a journalist, if you're a personality, you have something to say, you want to write it, you want people to read it, you want people to pay to access that content, you don't need to work for CNN. You don't need to work for the New York Times. You don't need to work for Fox News. You don't need to work for The Atlantic. You don't need to work for New York Magazine. God knows why you would work for Business Insider. But anyways, you can build your own business on Substack. I think what will be interesting to see is how Substack retains talent over time and grows subs over time, right? The best way to keep all of the creators on Substack is to drive more revenue for them. It will be interesting to see how they do that and what type of product enhancements they make that will help those creators be more and more successful. 
I would argue they need to move into podcasting. They need to move into other areas beyond just the written word. They need to move into video, for example. Um, so I'm excited to see what happens next, not only with those creators, but with Substack at large. All right, so last headline, this is like a headline slash a rant, is big week for the divas. So we've got Adele, we've got Taylor Swift, and we've got Britney Spears. Shout out Taylor Swift. One thing I like to do on Fridays is text people. Um, and I like to text like, hey, how you doing? Just checking in. So I was obviously checking in with a lot of people over the last couple of weeks because we've had a roller coaster here. Um, and one of the people I checked in with uh, was, was Fights. So I text John Feidelberg. I was like, hey, Fights, how you doing? What's going on? Half expecting that everyone is like, oh, God, it's been an exhausting couple weeks. You know, I'm OK. Fights was like, I've never been better. Taylor Swift just Taylor Swift's album is going to propel me through this Friday. What I love about Taylor Swift, one is like credit to that woman for taking for taking her career and putting it back into her hands for remaking a product that was or remaking music that was so beloved. I think the idea of every track from Red having Taylor's version on it, like it's so aptly named. I was listening to I Knew You Were Trouble this morning and I was like, oh shit, I'm not listening to Taylor's version. Like I'm giving money on Spotify. I'm giving like a half of a half of a half of a cent to the wrong person. So shout out to Taylor Swift for, for launching her album, for making money on her music versus giving that money to someone else. And for being a being so talented to remake the same music in a way that I, I can't even really tell the difference slash think it's better. All right. Second one, Britney Spears. So Britney Spears is the ripe old age of 40. Can you believe Britney Spears is 40? I mean, that's just so sad. I must be like 100 years old at this point. Anyways, Britney Spears is free. Her conservatorship, which was being run by her father and her family, has finally been lifted by a judge. The woman is free. She had a glass of champagne at a lovely restaurant, she said. What can Britney do now? Pretty much whatever the fuck she wants. So Britney couldn't buy a house. Britney can now buy a house. Britney couldn't control her money. Now she can control her money. So I'm excited for Britney. There's just women taking control of themselves all over the place today. I love that. Finally, Adele. So Adele, very shrewd, very savvy. She partnered with James Corden. Do you remember the um, carpool karaoke with Adele and James Corden? The Adele James Corden carpool karaoke is one of the best things I've ever seen ever. Not only do those two duet well together, they created a great business together. So Adele was on Oprah last Sunday night. She also had a concert on CBS. She and Corden own the rights to that concert. They charged CBS, I think somewhere between five and seven million dollars for the rights to air the show. They pocketed a huge percentage of that. Massive, massive ratings, huge live event in the entertainment space. And what I always love to see is that the money is going back to Adele, not going to a bunch of publicists and labels and marketing people and whatnot. So shout out to Taylor, shout out to Britney, and shout out to Adele. Speaking of Britney, if I were Britney, I would be buying several houses right now. She might want to consider cross-country mortgage. I bet Britney Spears has not thought a lot about mortgages, but... Cross Country Mortgage is a people first group of people. I'm sure that they would love to work with Brittany now that she can buy a house. They're dedicated to the fundamentals of mortgage lending and the result is a fast, convenient and less stressful way to buy a home. Rates right now, good for Brittany, are incredibly low. She does not need to give the bank more money than she absolutely needs to. I think Brittany's given enough people enough money over the years. All right, so if you're looking for a mortgage or you're a homeowner and you want to refinance, go to crosscountrymortgage.com slash barstool to learn more about your, your future home buying experience or to refinance your current mortgage. Cross Country Mortgage, LLC, NMLS, 3029, all loans subject to underwriting approval, www.nmlsconsumeraccess.org. Okay, so now we're into Q&A. Now we've talked about headlines, John Gruden's in the NFL, Metaverse is here to stay, divas are back on their feet and making more money and having more control than ever, and now we're asking people's questions. So first question. What do you do when you're consistently interrupted? Recognizing that sometimes people are just really eager to share ideas and their creative juices are flowing but other times it's really more about them thinking about what they're gonna say while you're talking. 
All right, this is a great question. I actually am working myself on not interrupting because I tend to get really excited when I'm in the middle of a conversation about something and then I didn't like. Um, so I think there's a couple reasons why people interrupt one another. One, they're like a puppy, which is kind of my problem where they just their train of thought isn't super linear and they're just like spilling it out in drips and drabs. So there's like the non-malicious interrupter, right? In that case, I think one of the things you can do is if it's your meeting that people are that people are attending, you can just lay out the ground rules. You're like, hey, please try to let everybody finish before you add in your next thought. If people could please be succinct, there's a lot of people in here. We're trying to get through a big conversation. So just give people a sense of what your expectation is in the meeting for how people should converse with one another. Um, I also think like, look, you can be patient a couple times if someone is like me and like dribbling and drabbing their point out. After like, let's say the third time, I think you need to be like, hey, um, if you could just hold your thought for a second, we'll come back to you. Like, I think there's a nice way to say like, oop, hold that thought or pause or you're really just saying shut the fuck up, but say it in a nice, pleasant way so that the person doesn't feel silenced, but the person also understands, ooh, the way I'm sharing this information, may, there may be a better way to do that than I'm doing it right now. The second is when someone thinks that their point is more important than yours. So this is a more malicious type of interruption. Um, I find if I'm in a really heated conversation, especially with men, they tend to interrupt me, at which point we have an interesting gif here. This happened to me in Big Brain, where I was trying to make a point to one of the contestants and the contestant was like mansplaining the fuck to me, or the contestant was mansplaining me. I was getting so annoyed that I was like, let me finish. So in the case where you're getting mansplained or someone is rudely interrupting you when you're trying to finish a point, I think it's completely acceptable to say, let me finish. I also think it's it's completely acceptable to stop talking, but to show your displeasure and then to start talking again after that person is finished and to say, please let me finish what I was originally trying to say. So I think you got to decipher like, why are people interrupting and how are they interrupting you? And then you can find your own way to mitigate the situation, either saying, hey, here are the, here's the ground rules of the conversation or asserting yourself and say, please don't interrupt me. First of all, I'm insanely old to be recording a video of myself for a question. So this is fun. Uh, my question is, we are dropping our very first podcast on December 2nd. Um, I work for a nonprofit in Chicago dealing with kids in childhood cancer. So the podcast is going to be really specific to um, what families go through when they're diagnosed. Um, I am the host. I am also a pediatric cancer survivor, so it's very fitting, which is exciting. And I want to know what your number one piece of advice would be for uh, someone dropping a podcast for the very first time um, and a podcast that has a very specific audience. Okay, awesome. So congratulations on your podcast. You're not insanely old to be sending a video. Like, videos are great. I was just reading a bunch of industry I was just reading a bunch of an industry report this morning in that everything is moving to podcasting, everything is moving to live audio, and everything is moving to video. So you're doing the right thing if you want to start a conversation about pediatric cancer. My biggest advice to you in creating a podcast is once you create a podcast, you create a podcast. So you've got to really commit to it. You have to be constantly refining what you talk about, how you talk about it. You've got to stay focused on like, are listeners dropping off? Are they staying tuned in? Is this boring? Like you can't buy your own bullshit. You need to really keep making sure that the podcast is delivering for the audience uh, to which it's intended, right? Is the, is the podcast furthering a narrative and helping people? Is it provoking a conversation about pediatric cancer that isn't being had? Is it giving mothers of, of kids with cancer support that they don't have right now? So really think about your audience first and foremost. And then two, just keep focusing on it, keep improving it, keep iterating on it. Don't ever rest. Don't ever feel like, oh, I've made it. I have the perfect podcast. Um, you know, one of the things I love if you talk to the Pardon My Take guys, Big Cat or PFT, they'll tell you that they spend all day thinking about like, how can they make Pardon My Take better? I mean, they're into this thing for five years at this point. And if you go back and listen to the first episode to now, you see how greatly it's changed. 
you should have that same thing, even though your audience isn't football or sports fans or business fans like this podcast, you should really be thinking about how is what you have to say being received by your audience? Is it doing what you intended it to do? Can your fans help you make it better? And can you com- can you commit to continuing to improve and refine it so that it becomes even more valuable over time? All right, so if you're starting a podcast and you don't have time to go to the gym or you don't have the money to have a gym membership, you should try Echelon. What is Echelon? Echelon is like Peloton, Mirror, any at-home workout company all rolled into one. They've got great fitness classes. They've got super affordable equipment. And they make it very easy to get fit in the comfort of your own home. You can take thousands of workout classes. You can climb the leaderboard. You can compete against your friends. You can compete in the metaverse of strangers that you're working out with. And right now, they're offering a massive discount to anybody who's listening to this podcast who wants to make it easier to work out at home. So hey, if you think like Peloton is too expensive, or if you have a gym membership and you're like, I'm kind of freaked out about COVID, I don't want to go there, go give Echelon a try. So anybody listening to this podcast gets $800 off the MSRP. Text CEO to 818181. That's CEO to 818181 to get $800 off your echelon. All right. So I'm really excited about this one. Uh, Jenna Lyons joins us today. We have kind of a sweet meandering conversation about everything from her time at J. Crew, what Love Scene is, why she created an eyelash company, what she's doing with her time, what she's learned from her career, how she's used vulnerability to help move herself forward, and how she's found that embracing that vulnerability has brought her even more joy and even more opportunity in her career, and more importantly, in her life. So here's Jenna Lyon. Aren't you so happy that you made it out of your 40s, though? I think 40s suck. I, like. My emotional side is happy to be out of my 40s. My ass, definitely not. Really? Like it drops? I'll be back in my 40s. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, oh, I don't know what happened. Like, literally, it was like the day after my 50th birthday. It just like, collapsed. What the f- Everyone, like, gave up. It's like, all, like, I got as far as I'm going to take you. I'm like, you're on your own. I'm like, thanks. Thanks so much. <laughs> okay. No, it's like, the time spent. Like, wow. They, like, literally vacated. I don't know what happened. My boobs are holding on for dear life. Thank God. Your boobs look good. Th- th- thanks. Yeah. Uh, as a gift from my mother. Great, like natural boobs. Yeah, that's amazing. She has them. I have. I'm still to this day. She but has my great ass, boobs. Like just not. But if you had ball. to choose, I'd choose boobs. Fair. And in in clothes, you can kind of mask the ass. Boobs, you can also mask. But like, but see, the thing is, getting a boob job is a little bit more acceptable and easier. I mean, and now these days you get an ass job. But at my age, like, who's doing that? No, I don't think there's like, a lot. No, I think I don't long, even know how it would work. How does it work? Where do they get the fat from? Your stomach. I like that you think I know the answer to this question. <laughs> All right, so tell me what you're doing. No. <laughs> like, what is Jenna Lyons I'm sitting doing in right envy now? I'm this very... 25-year-old girl who thinks that it's good to be old and has no idea. Yes. She's probably never met a 50-year-old, just She's really, to be really clear. I know. It's My weird. parents are 60. Oh, well, that doesn't count. That actually makes me feel worse. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I could be your mother. Um, all right, so what am I doing? Um, well... I am doing a couple of things. Yeah. My sort of dearest and nearest, or nearest and dearest. Nearest and dearest. Is um, I have a lash brand called Love Scene, which I started um, about, God, it's been a year. Almost over, well, right? We started, so the, the development process was okay. two years. So, okay, got it. Um, I mean, the development process was a year, then we launched a year ago in the middle of a pandemic, which yep. is honestly like, don't do that at home, kids. Yeah. Not fun. Launching a business in the middle of a pandemic is definitely like something I will not repeat okay okay not gonna do that again no. hopefully we won't have another pandemic or we're just gonna I'm gonna just go with in one right yeah I feel like we're I think we're perpetually gonna be in a pandemic but anyway I, I don't think you're wrong I think that's might be right um and then I'm also doing this thing called the expert which is um it is a website and you can go on and sign up so you and I could talk, talk for how you can book a time you can book ugh. You can oh, book an really? hour. You can book oh, an hour. Okay, so I could be like Jenna. I would like an hour with Jenna Lyons. You can hour. Now it's mostly design focused. However, I've gotten all kinds of meetings. I've gotten people coming on and being like, basically, clearly, just wanted a date. 
That's amazing. I was like, cool. If you want to, it's like me the new Tinder. To flirt. Yeah, great. I'm, like, I'm all in. I'm all in. I give great face. Time. I got, you know, I've gotten one. So can we just do career advice? I'm like, okay, like sure. So and then most of it is, um, most of it is interior design, and I've done everything from a bathroom to a whole house to a kitchen, and I have a client in Saudi Arabia, like the nicest couple you have ever met, Sarah and Jawad. They're incredible, and they're like, can you just do it for us? I'm like, cool. Yeah, great. So how does it work? They book you by time. Yeah. And, and then it. you FaceTime with them, or do they pay you for when you're putting together designs or sketches? I or? do it all in real time. So it's all, like, they'll walk me through their house, and I'll be like, what should I put here? I'm like, how about this? And they're like, well, what should I do with the living room? I draw a little sketch. I'm like, how about this? And then they'll say, well, what about this? I'm like, oh, well, you could do this, this, and this. Or I'll pull up pictures while I'm on the phone with them. So we do a Zoom call, and then I'll pull up images, and I'll just send them to them and say, well, what about this? Or I'll share a screen, put things together, and they're like, that's great. And then most of them book a second time. Some people just want to do a bathroom and they don't need a I'm sorry, time. I have to be tacky. How much does it cost? I, I am. <laughs> do you set your own rate? Sort of. I mean, it was the first time I'd done it, so they kind of helped me. So it's $1,500 an hour. Okay. And they take a cut. And um, and some people are more expensive than I am. Like who? I don't know. I don't want to say okay. that. <laughs> I, I, you should be the most expensive. I, that's, what, that's what I think. Yeah. I, I agree with that. <laughs> You're worth it. Thanks. Like You're Jenna fucking Lyons. <laughs> right? You're like, do you want to look like America or not? <laughs> oh my God, that te- that headline is going to follow me until the day I die. I think I should put that on my tombstone. You should make actually. it a t-shirt and sell it. That is for shit sure. You should do that. I, I don't know why know I haven't done that. You know, you should right. have that business. You're, I'll run your t-shirt business. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Uh, so I'm doing that. I'm also consulting with Rockefeller Center. Um, so they have really wanted to completely redo the center. So okay. changing out the retail, making all of the F&B really match you know, New York, New York City, which it okay. did not. So it's, it had gotten very big box, yep. all clothing stores. And so we've been really working to bring in female-owned businesses, black-owned businesses, Asian-owned businesses, That's Hispanic. That's awesome. Like, really trying to change up. And we've been, there are some really great new stores up there. So if you haven't been, you should go. That's great. And great restaurants like Franchette's opening, Lodi just opened, which is Ultra Party yep. Zone. Ignacio did that one. There's, yeah, it's exciting. I just had um, the people, f- oh, I don't know if I'm allowed to say that one. I don't think they've signed the contract. Also. Okay, oh. so don't say that. Oh, Tell me the story of Love Scene. So I um, I didn't have a job. And I this weird thing happens when you which don't I have a job. Which I want to talk to you about after. So <laughs> okay. keep going, I, The one thing that happens when you don't have a job is that you, you're just more open. And I think... You know, I originally when I left J. Crew, I thought, well, I'm just going to go and do another fashion job. Yeah. And that was sort of what I had anticipated. And then it didn't happen. I didn't get any phone calls. Like, literally no one called. Yeah. And I I had a little bit of a panic. And, yeah. and so I just started talking to people and started taking meetings and started taking lunches. And I was open to anything. And along the way... Were someone, you feeling badly about yourself? Oh, um, yeah. Yeah. That's not the most... I mean, it's... But I think it's really important because I I read an article about you where you were saying like you had you left J. Crew, the phone stops ringing. Like everybody says that. But until you experience it, I I think it's very lonely. And you you were saying I loved how you described it, where you were like, I have I had all these this ambition of I'm going to cook this. I'm going to be a great mom. I'm going to start 70 companies, which you ended up doing. Um, But you're like, I just sat on I just sat on the couch. Yeah, I mean, I, it was a really, I don't know how I can describe it. It was a little bit like feeling sort of swept under a tidal wave yeah. where I had worked so hard for so long. I mean, I don't know if I can describe what my life was like. Yeah, I, I believe it. I was sitting, you know, at over three businesses. So it was Madewell, Crew, and Factory. So I was on the design side of all of those. So we're seeing three teams of creative, three teams of, you know, marketing, three teams of product, like product design. It was, it was massive. And I was exhausted. And intense. Yeah. I was exhausted. And I think when I when it stopped, it stopped like a dead stop. Yeah. You know, it was like well, I my calendar was chalk a block every yep. day, yep. Every, every night. Hour. Every hour I had three assistants, two people, you know, uh, someone at home helping me, someone cooking for me, someone doing my laundry. Like I everything. Had staff. Pink. And on top of that, you know, I also broke up with my girlfriend at the very same time. So okay. like my life so literally you're like, like bring it life. I remember sitting on my couch and being like Okay, now what? I have no one. And I was really, and I, and the other thing, and I know this sounds pathetic, but there's only a few people that can really understand this. I, I got promoted right when computers were coming into the world. Like okay. When I joined J. Crew, we were using faxes. I was doing yeah. everything by hand. I was writing out faxes by hand. We didn't have a computer. I didn't have a computer on my desk. And then I got promoted. And so then I had an assistant. And so I didn't have a computer. And all of the work that I did was visual. I yeah. was going to meetings and talking about 
design. I was picking fabrics. I, yeah, there was no computer involved in my yep. job. So now I leave my job and someone's like, can you send an attachment? I'm like, Oh, sure. shit, Jenna. I didn't Which think about that. post office do you want me to go to? Okay, <laughs> like, got it. Like, there was just all huh. this stuff on the computer that I had never done. And, you know, I know how to use an app here and there, but sure. I just am not professional. And I felt really, like, disconnected. That, and couldn't do things for myself. It, and it was, probably makes you feel like you can't use your hands. Like you, When it makes me, you know, it made me feel like I couldn't take care of myself. And that was a really hard that's a debilitating way to feel. place to be at my age. And, you know, and I had a, I mean... And I didn't cook. I mean, it was just like the list of things I couldn't do was yeah. longer than the list and of things I could. And growing by the day. Yes. <laughs> and like, the thing that sucks. had given you so much validation that you were so exceptional at went away. Like, I, I give you so much credit just for the strength you showed in that. And then also that you're so honest about it. I think most people try to gloss over that, like, shit period. When something bad mm -hmm. happens or you're in a transition or you're – you know, you're like making those lists of how much you suck every day. Oh, God. I mean, well, I had a really interesting thing happen when I was, I don't know, just sort of my world was just becoming a little bit more public. I There was an article written by New York, in New York Magazine by a writer named Molly, and I'm going to forget her last name, but I loved her. And she was pretty, like, she dug, and she okay. wanted to know things, and she talked, and she was like, can you tell me about your genetic disorder? I was like, wow, how did you know that? I had never talked about it openly, and I finally just was like, I have nothing, like, why not? What, like, what, yeah, is, what am I hiding? Like, who cares? And I did, and I could not believe the outpouring of support and love, and also people who were like, thank you for being honest and mm -hmm. being vulnerable, and I realized that that got me far more um, sort of healthy, yep. loving accolades than anything else I had done, hmm. and I think people... Like, are human and yeah. they are faulted. And yeah, they, flawed. And they feel, like, deeply shamed about something yeah. in their life or they're yeah. are scared or embarrassed or, like, that they're not perfect. And and sometimes when you actually do allow people to see that you have that too, particularly if you've actually achieved something that maybe they want to achieve, that can feel That's connected. That's a really powerful thing. It yep. can provide connection in a way that no matter how many, like, beautiful dresses I might have been a part of, that doesn't give the same connection as yeah. feeling like... Yeah oh, you were vulnerable and honest and, like, shared something that made me feel, like, less afraid or less alone. Yeah, or or that I relate to you and that I'm struggling in the same totally. way. Because I know the article you're talking about, and I read it at a very dark time, and I really mm. loved that article. What was your dark time? I don't talk about it here. I'm not, I'm not at your stage yet. We can talk about it offline. Okay. Shit, this was a great moment on the podcast that we're not going to have. <laughs> um, we will have it, though, at some point. Um, and then I'm going to have Jenna back. Um, okay, wait. So what are the lessons like? What are So the thing that makes me mad when I read about you <laughs> is All right. everybody just talks about how the Obamas wore the dresses to the inauguration, which I love. I love Michelle Obama's style. I loved your style. I wore you for like 20 years. Mm. But what are the – I think what you're sharing now, though, is so much more interesting like so tell what are the lessons of Jenna Lyons's life <laughs> I mean I think I would say probably the thing that I gained the most from going through some of that hard stuff is a sense of humility and also like there's not a single person in the room that isn't struggling like that I have yet to meet someone who doesn't have some dark thing underneath their desk that they're afraid of or that they're struggling with it could be you know, family related, child related, it could be love related, it could be aspirations, it could be, there's so many things. And when you remember that, like, it makes you a more human leader, it makes you a more connected boss, it makes you a more like, understanding team member, because you're not like, there's this assumption that like, everyone's like, kicking it out of the park. And it just yeah. is not the case. Like, yeah. I was not at all times. And and I and my team wasn't either. Like, yeah. they all it was like, everyone rotated, there's always someone who was going through something yeah, you know yeah. and then they would come back yeah. up but having that sensitivity I think made me really proud of like I everyone on my senior team I worked with for like some of them for 20 yeah, plus yeah. years I remember reading this and yeah. I think that's like that was what allowed me to do what I did yeah I don't think I could have done it I, I know I couldn't have done it without them yeah and so like that part of my experience growing up made me a, a different I think probably type of a boss yep um were you happy when you were at J. Crew? I mean, I was there for 27 years. So yeah. <laughs> there were definitely moments. Sometimes. There were some good moments and there were some really bad moments. I mean, I think the thing that is 
hard to explain to people is like in over 27 years that company was five different companies it yeah. was not one company it yeah. was run it was mom and pop when I got yeah. there run by Emily and her father it was then we you know transitioned into you know uh, we had a president and that was a different era when she was sort of transitioning out then we were purchased by TPG and that was the early stages of you know that venture and that sort of time period and then we had multiple CEOs and then Mickey joined and so they were all really different very different experiences so it was like five different jobs and what do you think your gift was in making it 27 years um that's a good question I I think I mean first of all when you think when I think back to the beginning stage when I was there at the beginning like I was a diehard I mean this was early days like J. Crew was the only catalog I remember when I joined like you had to write your order on a slip and then oh, send in a send check. Oh, send it in. With yes, a check. I was doing that yeah. for like a Heather Gray yeah. sweater exactly. that I'm still looking for. Yeah, exactly. I'll never love a sweater the way I loved the Heather Gray. <laughs> I forget the word. You, pr you probably named it, but. Well, I don't know. It depends. On, I mean, I, I do love a color name. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so I, I think, um, you know, I loved it. I was an absolute diehard, you know, Emily was putting like Christy Turlington and Linda Evangelista in the yeah. catalog. And I was like, yeah, like them modeling a t-shirt that was the coolest thing and sort of very, you know, groundbreaking. It was honestly. disruptive. Yeah, it, it was really so was. And it was shocking in a way. Yeah. And it was so exciting to be there. And, you know, and then I fell in love. I fell in love with the team. I fell in love with the people. And then when things got bad, I started to get promoted, which is a weird time hmm. to get promoted when things are bad. And mm -hmm. then what happens is all of a sudden you're team is like I gotta go because this sucks and I'm like no please don't go and they're like well are you gonna stay I'm like yes I'm gonna, well, stay. I'm gonna stay and then all of a sudden you're like oh now I have to actually stay yeah yeah <laughs> like, 100%. I actually committed see to this people. through yeah. and so what happened was I started to you know feel like a sense of responsibility and, and, obligation. and obligation and also like loyalty to yeah. the people who I wanted to I wanted to see it through and I wanted it to change so then I didn't feel like I could leave and then Mickey joined and then yeah. I was like I'm not going anywhere yeah, this yeah. man is amazing and yeah. so I you know I think part of it was you know tenacity and part of it was just like good old fashioned like stick to itiveness like I could yeah. I, I, there wasn't really a great time to go and not only that but in the dark times nobody would have hired me anyway yeah right. and then when Mickey joined I was like oh I don't want to go anywhere yeah. and then he locked me off the contract and it didn't matter I couldn't go anywhere anyway <laughs> um talk about you've talked about fashion and design as an armor yes. and talk it talk about love scene like is that like do you I, think about lashes as armor I kind of do I mean I think it's interesting I, you know when I first started it, it became from a very natural place, which yeah. is I, I don't have any eyelashes myself because of my genetic disorder. And so I noticed them on other people. And doesn't it really piss you off when you see a woman with amazing, regular, normal, uh, their very own eyelashes? Slut. It's no, Daniela Catanacci is the best eyelashes I've ever seen. It pisses me off I, to no end every day. No, I, it's just not right. Oh, no, I, well, I have, I have like a triple, I triple down because anything related to skin, hair and teeth, I'm like. You're obsessed with, totally. Oh, I know, like to the point where it's a little. Um, I also hate when men have great eyelashes because oh, I just think that's what are they doing with them? What are they doing? What are you guys doing? Yeah. With I know. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think, you know, that they. I think any kind of, you know, adornment is yeah. some sort of like you're either telling a story or you're putting on some sort of a an armor. I think anything that kind of can metamorphosize or yeah. change the way you see yourself in the mirror can be really powerful, and that can give you whatever it is that you need. Yep. And I think you know, particularly with Zoom, I've been wearing them more and more because like yeah, I look at myself in the face like and I'm huge. like oh hi it's yep. like I like it I love yeah. the way it feels that's great and you know and it does there's something flirty about eyelashes and I Definitely. think we, you know when you know batting your lashes is something I've never really been able to do and so that you don't realize it until you have them you're like oh this is kind of works. yeah you're like I'm yeah. it's like Bambi where it, you're uh, just like hi. yep yeah and I also like that there's so many like I had gotten a kit from love scene, I guess it was this summer. And I loved, like, it was overwhelming to me a little bit because I also, I don't have great eyelashes and then I'm like, I don't know how to do anything. So it's like, <laughs> they'd be like half off and whatever. But it's like, you can have so many looks. The same woman can be so many different, so many different people. I, well, and that's part of what I love about clothes too. I remember the f the first time when we started Love Scene, we were twin we'd put them on a bunch of different women to try them out. And this one woman came and she said, I want to look like a doll. Like, so we were building them on people. Oh, like the, Oh, and, I love well, the, And I was like, well, what does that zip. mean to you? Well I, she, well, I said to her, what does that mean to you? And she's like, well, I want all the fullness towards the center. I don't want the fullness on the outside oh. because that feels more doll-like to me. I was like, cool. Great. But it's funny. That's Axel. I can't wear Axel. It doesn't totally work on me. But the Nor, which is like a much more sort of an irregular sort of bigger one, I never thought I could wear it. 
I'm like now addicted to Noor. It's really? It's like my favorite. Yeah. It's How my... long does it take you to put them on? Oh, literally two seconds. Even if you're an idiot and, and are, can't do Well, no, like... the first three times I did it. It's like, it's one do of those things. The, do you do the glue yourself? Like, well, t- I do the glue. Like... I do it differently. So like you have eyelashes, so you can put the glue on, on, the, the, on the lash on the lash and then put the lash on and it will hit it will sit on top of your eyelashes and it will rest there okay i don't have anything for it to rest on so i have a tendency to put the glue on my eye and then the lash is finding the glue okay if i put the glue on the lash then i have to maneuver it it's too much because i don't it doesn't, even to, it doesn't have anything to rest yeah. on but i've gotten really good at it i mean i've had to put them on like and when you're doing an ig live and putting them on and the, not only that but i can't see anything yeah yeah I'm you're blind yeah so you're, but I like that you also are real. I think you're so real. Like I like that you show the bloopers. Like, oh. well, it's some. I mean, nobody can do it, it right the first time. Yeah. I do, you, the idea that it's perfect, and then the most common thing is people say, "Oh, I'm not good. I can't get them on." And I'm like, "Totally, I couldn't do it at the beginning either." And you know, we also created a tool that does really help because I couldn't. The thing I found with tweezers is that they put the lash on, but you're doing it from this side and it's sort of holding the lash in the end and then you have to come over this side and I found that it's always, awkward. I yeah. was always getting them kind of tilted on the other side and so the la- the tool allows you to come in straight on both sides and it helps a lot. I, I couldn't do it without that. Hmm. What do you think about having a career? Like one thing I really love about how you talk about yourself is like you're just very blunt about what you're good at and you're genius at and then you're like, and I can't do these 700 things. Like how do you, what's your advice to other women who are, like I think very often it's very easy as a woman to like hold yourself back because you can't cook, use apps, send an attachment, put on eyelashes, dress well. Yeah. Do math in my case. Like, what's your <laughs> advice to, to women? I mean, I think I remember really distinctly we had a board member named Heather Eastman, who um, I adore. And, you know, it was the first time I'd seen a woman in a board meeting. And I wasn't really sure how to how to be in that. You know, it was an enclave that I was, had just sort of recently yeah, gotten into. Too. And I watched her ask questions and admit that she didn't know what was going on. And I was like, it I made me realize that it's okay to ask and you don't have to know everything. Mm-hmm. And the people who actually do, it makes you far more respected yeah. because the fact matters, there's at any given moment, there's Other someone people. in that room who does not really know yeah. and they're too afraid to ask. And I think asking comes from a position of power and honestly in all honesty, because it basically is like, I actually know my shit. I don't know this particular yeah. thing, yep. but I do know my shit and I'm conf- enough confidence yeah, to I'm actually ask. Correct. I'm not insecure or afraid. Right. And I think, and whether that's done in a room full of people or you pull someone aside and be like, hey, I didn't totally know what you were talking about. Can you explain that mm-hmm. to me? And, you know, and it's interesting because I'm on the board of Shake Shack and, you know, I've been on the board for six years since they went public and every once in a while they'll come out with some sort of weird acronym and I'm like, what the hell are they yeah, talking yeah. about? I'm like, and I'm, I feel myself kind of get a little embarrassed. Like, how, did I miss something? How yeah. do I not know what they're talking about? And then, of course, I ask and I realize that three other people well, are nodding. Like, oh, they, they don't, don't know. know. You know, and it's like having that confidence to just be okay saying, like, I, I know what I know and that's, that's enough. Yep. And be curious. Okay. Then I also read that you're designing a hotel. Yes. I, yeah. I didn't mention that. Um, I've been working on that oh, for the that. past couple of years. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's, I know it's, well, it's been a long arc. I started probably almost two and a half years ago. It's in Elbow Key, the Bahamas, yep. which was hit by that horrible, yeah. horrible hurricane. And so everything was sort of stopped for a little while. We thought the whole project was going to go away. But in, if anything, um, the family has been, they sort of doubled down and are now looking to really reinvigorate the island completely starting a school doing bringing in all new clean water yep. you know uh, hydroelectric like electrical like like modernizing modernizing everything I sh- i'm yep. talking like i really know what i'm no, talking no, that's all but right. it's pretty amazing and that's so that's been that's been so incredibly fun we're in the stages we just finished sort of the uh, all of the architecture part and now we're going you know into interior design. I've started the interior design, but haven't gotten there. But we're doing everything from like the restaurants to the you know the uniforms to the actual interior of the store to you know there's a retail component of it, a spa. It's a lot. <laughs> That's amazing, though. It's How fun. do you stay inspired and current with your design? Like, has your design aesthetic changed in the last thirty years? I mean, for sure. Yeah. I mean, I think. What are your design principles? Like, what's the like Gen Alliance secret? I need oh, it. Oh God. I mean, I think I'm. I desperately try always to, it's like there's two things that I 
try and finding things that are rooted in history, but then things that, and how do you and like how do you then twist them a little bit? Like I do appreciate in design and in clothing as well. Like something that has like where did it come from? Like knowing where something came from and understanding its lineage is so important to be able to manipulate it. And I got that from I went to Parsons and I remember I took Humble a drawing break. class. <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I, think I went to Harvard, might be a little bit more. Huh? Um, Nobody would care. I, and, uh, <laughs> fair. Um, I, and I remember my art teacher said, you know, we were doing all of these, like, r real understandings of the structure of the human body. And I okay. was like, I don't need to know, like, where the femur hits the, like, I don't yeah. care. I just want to draw a pretty picture. Yeah. And she's like, no, no, you have to understand what's underneath it and able to, be, before you can manipulate it. Okay, that's cool. And I was like, hmm, that makes sense. And so yeah. it's like trying to understand, like, what what's underneath What's things. underneath, like, where something came from. And that, to me, is always really interesting. And then my other thing is, like, I do not, I've never seen, whether it be in clothing and or in, in interiors, when you're too timid, it just doesn't come together. Like, mm -hmm. be a little bit more, like, go a little farther than your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. Like, push yourself a little bit farther. Like, get a coat that's a little bit bigger. Wear a color that's a little bit brighter. Go, f you know, push your proportions. And the same thing at home. Like, do a big gesture. Like, have a dramatically dark hallway or a pink couch. Like, don't be afraid to, like, go for something. Because I think that's when you... I don't know, when you stand out and when you actually are able mm -hmm. to like make a mark, is it, mm -hmm. but being timid about it, it's like, mm, no one's going to notice. Have you hated rules? Like, are you, where are you on rules? Not that good of a rule follower. Yeah, no, it doesn't seem like you're a good rule follower. It's, 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 Quietly, not a good rule follower, I'm I would a good, say. I'm a good, I stand in line and I don't cut. Okay. But beyond that. <laughs> okay, okay. You're like, I'll queue. I will definitely queue up. Uh, you'll queue up. I hated that. I lived in London. Men in London just love to queue. I hated it. It made me hate that country. It's so funny. <laughs> they just love to fucking stand in line. I'm like, life is passing you by. I cannot live Wait, here. Do you cut in line? I don't cut. I just don't like to stand in line. Do you and shimmy? If I can, no, I, like the airport. Okay. Oh. Here's my deal. Mm -hmm. I hate line cutters because they're rude and they shove totally. around and you're like, eh. I'm not afraid, though, when it's like Group D is called to get up there right before Group D is called. Fair. fair, fair absolutely. I want to get in my seat and settled. I want to get all of my things set up. Yeah, you want to get your 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 place. I want to get my, yeah, like I want to be on the first. I want to be I'm first on, first off. I'm about a line. That's how I am. I have a good line anticipation. <laughs> Got it. Like in the grocery store, I'm like, is it going to be line A? Like the Whole Foods checkout. I mean, come on. Oh, my God. I love watching the counter. Me too. It's so satisfying. I could stand there all day. I, I, I literally, it's my favorite. No, it's my favorite yeah. thing. I've I never met anybody else that appreciates that. That's so that. funny. I think when things are going wrong, if you just stand in line at Whole no, Foods, you're like, it's my like meditative. come up. And I just like watching and be it's like, gonna oh, work who's going to go next? <laughs> Oh, okay. It's going to be her. Where's she going to go? Oh, 100%. she's going to go to 19. Who's going to open up? Oh, yeah. Totally. Which one's going to... I, ooh, 17 seems slow. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and then I play a game with myself of what register I'm going to get too. at. <laughs> it's good for your soul. I, it's just like, I do the same thing. I'm like, oh, she's fast. I want to get her. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Oh, my God. You're like, I'm so like, happy to know that I'm not alone. No, you're not alone. Okay, what about color, though? What about color? What's your rules on color? Or not rules. What are your... What's I mean, your I vision? literally think I own four black things like I just you're wearing no color today it's unusual I um, agree. I'm wearing four black things I, I one of them I, one of them is a pair of pants but I have I mean great. I think I I think I own thank you I think I own this pair of black pants and a black jacket like two black jackets like I mean I I think like I appreciate more than anything I appreciate color I appreciate the way color reacts I appreciate the way people look in color I had a, mm -hmm. a pink desk because I sat down in, on that desk in the store and Someone took a picture of me. My son took a picture of me sitting across, a, like a playful picture, and I was like, "God, I look rosy." Like, and I realized it was skin. the desk. Yeah, I was like, "I'm taking the desk." Yeah, like, I have to have it. I, and everyone thought I was so bold about color. It was just I wanted to look good. Yeah, I mean, I do think like color is reactive, and it's funny because I remember my mom, like we were going shopping, and she was she kept panic picking these pale colors. My mom has very pale color. Okay, and she liked. Does light your mom blue. have the genetic disorder? No, I am I am the lucky one who's a spontaneous okay, the winner. mutation. Yep. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Great. Thanks, I mean, family. Amazing, right? Yep. And um, but um, she had really pale coloring, light blue eyes, and she loves light blue. And like literally, she put a light blue thing on. I'd be like, Whoa, where'd you go? Yeah, like, where's my mother? <laughs> she just like disappear. And then I was like, Well, can we put you in like navy or really rich deep blue? She's like, Oh, it's so dark. And I'm like, Yeah, but it will it'll pop. make you crisp and. 
getting her into it and she you know and it's like people get into this thing oh, I like peach I like this color and it's like well does it actually work on you like I think sometimes it's just about seeing like really using your eyes to see and the other thing it's like when in, in home stuff I'm like look at your sight lines like look in your living room what do you see if you see a jumble or does or just are things lined up does it feel symmetrical does it feel right. rambling yep. do you have a bunch of eight million colors in your room three materials four materials is enough like if you have 80 things going on it's probably too much mm -hmm. Like there's all these little things that I do in my head, but sight lines are a big thing, and like contrast and contrast and color often really. Mm -hmm. I don't know, those are my favorite. What are you things. wearing on like a Saturday afternoon in your apartment or in your house? You know, it's so ridiculous. I li literally, basically, since the pandemic, I wear nothing but Dickies. Okay, that's all I wear. They're twenty nine dollars. Yeah, it's amazing. And I'm, I don't care. Yeah, and I like them. Yeah, you can wear them like six times over without washing. Uh, yeah, yeah. And the even better part is. My son likes them and he thinks they're cool. And oh, like, so then you're that's when he, double. Now that he's now 15, you're, you're never I'm like literally out of Dickies. I, it's <laughs> yeah, you're like Dickies for life. It's like my new thing. Um, yeah, and then that, and I'm I like really like like a good pair of sweatpants, but I am just trying to like remove myself from that. Like, there's a part of me that like I need to be held in. Yeah, I like to be sucked I need in. a little loving. High waist pants or not high waist? High, pants? Hi. but um, I'm tall. You're tall and very thin. I, I'm not thin, but I'm tall. There's all kinds of stuff going on underneath You just get packing it? Just, you know, there's just things that are happening down here. Yeah, no, I understand. It's a little bit of a combination of like labna and cottage cheese. <laughs> yes, totally. I love cheese. Same. It's Same. good for you. Same. You're wearing it. Yeah. <laughs> so do your thighs. I take it with me everywhere. <laughs> all right, Jenna, what's your favorite look that you've been photographed in? That's easy. Oh, I would all right. It is. I know. Well, it's also one that has had the biggest impact on my life. I got photographed going to Solange's wedding in a skirt that was a feather skirt, sort of oh, I know this dappled picture. all down, yeah. a white crisp shirt and a, a sort of soft mink coat over my shoulders. And um, it was the, by far like the shot heard around the world. That, really? That outfit. Do you still have the outfit? Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Absolutely. Can you wear it again? Oh, I've worn the skirt many times. Oh, there it is. Oh, she's so gorgeous. Yeah, thank you. Oh, yeah. But the best part is, I will just have to, there's a funny story behind that. And not to, I know you didn't ask me to tell the story, but I'm going to. We love your stories. Thanks. So Solange was worried about press, but this wedding was in New Orleans. And so um, we had gone out the night before. There was a huge party the night before. And they, in New Orleans, people like get down. Like they yeah, do not they mess around. Up. Yeah. We were out till like five in the morning. Okay. And so, and then we're in this hotel room. It's pitch black. The hotel's blackout shades. Anyway, wake up at like, I don't know, 12, 15, 12, 30, dead tired. And I roll over and I look at my phone. And I'm like, oh God, and the wedding's at three. Anyway, I put my phone back down. I go back to sleep for another five, 10 minutes. And then I like, my phone starts pinging and I look and I'm like, what, what's going on? They moved the wedding up an hour. Why? Because they were worried about press, so they were trying to throw them oh, off. Geez. Because obviously she has some famous people. Yeah, hundred percent. Which, which is crazy. But it was actually really. It was a very intimate wedding. It was really nice. It was not full of. It, I mean, obviously her sister, but yeah. it was actually really intimate in France. It was really nice. Losing You is so, one of my favorite songs I, ever. I, I, it's like I, literally one of the best songs ever. She's incredible, yeah. and her voice is just amazing. Yeah. Um. Anyway, so that outfit, no joke. I mean, if you saw me getting dressed, I mean, I was literally, literally like a my bat bed. out of hell. I. I, I don't even know what was holding up my hair. It might have been like dental floss. Like I barely got my hair up. I was like literally we were running out the door because we also had to then travel and get. It was, yeah. Anyway. Well, so you the looked fact great. That picture. It's like all I can think of when I think about that is how I felt when I was walking up. Yeah, like hungover, like, rushed, possibly late, yeah. gonna get hit by the pass. Yes. Yeah. It was like great. All right, I love it. Um, okay, so Jenna, tell people how they can find Love Scene, how they can follow you, what oh. you want people to do. Well, first of all. If you have trouble putting on the lashes, you can DM me. I do FaceTime with people when they're struggling because oh, I really do want people to figure it out, especially if you want to wear them. Like I'm all in and people who already know how to wear lashes have no problem, but it's always the people who are scared. So DM me. It's Jenna Lines, New York City. I have a little check by my name and I have a face going, which I should probably change. Mm -mm. But and then you can and also at Love Scene, you could lovescene.com. OK, thank Go try. My favorite is the iris. But this week it might be the Jack, and next week it'll be the Nor. So there's All right, that. great. That's how it works. And then you can also go on the Expert, and it's Masterclass should. Oh, my other idea for you is Masterclass should buy the Expert, and then you have you done a Masterclass yet? I haven't. I don't know what I would tell people. You could tell people anything you know. The thing is, all of my stuff is visual. It's so hard to do that visually. 
So, all right, Jenna, so I'm going to FaceTime you, or I'm going to DM you. Great. I'm going to test this out. No, I'm going to DM you. DM we'll me. See you write me back. I, I, I'm, you're good like that. I'm good. Okay, you're, you're going to write me back, and then we'll FaceTime, and I'll record it, and we'll put the lashes on. Oh, my God. But I do think you should have a master class, and then you should, okay. master class should buy expert whatever, and then, then it's like a transactional, it's like a feeder business for you. I'm going to help you with that. Great, and create great. Your Thanks. Thanks. Okay. All right, you're the Will best. you make me a wallpaper too? How fun I'm are obsessed. these girls, aren't they? I'm obsessed. Jenna, tell me what I do with these. The first thing you want to do is take it off the case. Take them, off, take one, take one off at, at the time. The one thing just to remember is that what you're looking at. So, in other words, you're looking at it, it, this is your right eye, this is your left eye. So when you pull it off, just take note of which one. So you, it's no, like this, is, Jenna, right? Like this. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so once you take it off, I have it. Thing, okay. And then just go like this, just swivel it. Can you see me swiveling it a little bit like that? It just kind of softens the band and like keeps it in a, in a soft round shape. Okay. okay. You're like pre-game. Let's go. Yeah, Soften pre-gaming. You're like, this is like literally, we are like, it's in, like in the back of the vodka shots okay. in my dorm room. Yep. What you're going to do is you are going to put some glue on the lash. I'm going to put the glue on my eye because I don't have any eyelashes, so I can't put the glue on the, the lash. It doesn't work for me, but okay, fine. I want you to put, and you can put a, you know, it will dry really clear, so don't be stressed if it's like colored. It's got a little bit of an opalescence to it. Well, I kind of like Make sure like you get that. it on the ends of the lash. Like get it. You want the corners. That's the most important part because that's the part that um, is going to stick. It will. Well, it's the part that will come up easiest. And then give it some time to dry. Don't put it on until it's a little bit tacky, because otherwise it won't stick, and you'll be like, "What the hell?" You put the lash in the tool like this here, like this. You want to slide it in a little more. Slide it so that it's all the way into the tool. See how it like matches the shape of the lash. Yep. You hold the tool like this, and then you go in. Literally, see the see how the shape of the tool it kind of matches your eye. Just like find that right above your eyelash line and drop it in right on top of your eyelash. Just keep a look at where the outside edge is. You don't want to go too far because it'll take your eye down. So just you know, try to match it up to your actual lash line as best as possible. And then once you're done, you can use the little tool to clamp the eyelash and your eyelashes together. I mean, how great is this thing? And then just clamp your eyelashes together with the other one, with the, using the tool to sort of sandwich them a little bit and give a gentle squeeze. You know, it's not a curler, it's just sort of to like... Press it on each other. Okay, I'm gonna just Wow, look at... Oh, gorge! Wow, it worked. Jenna, can I ask you a stupid question? So would I be able to wear these again? Yeah, you can wear them like up to like, I've worn, like the ones I'm putting on right now, I've worn like at least four times. And I put the them thing, in this. The key is, it, yeah, and then you just put them in the little tray. That's perfect, exactly. It goes right in your little breast tray and then you can carry them around and just travel with them. And then the other thing is, if you wear mascara, they don't last as long, but I don't like to wear mascara with them. I think they look more Oh, people put mascara on the fake lash? Um, some people do. Uh, I wouldn't do that. The other trick you can do is if you put a little mascara on your eyelashes. That's what I did. Yeah, that sometimes it just kind of helps them. It helps them sort of connect and stick a little bit more. Is your left hand one harder than your right? Um, well, I find that the tool does help because you can come in. So if you watch, like what I'm doing is you come in up above as opposed to going like this. Like try to, you know, the tool lets you just come, come in for space. There you go. Got it on. Same. Hi, Do you gorgeous. notice a difference? I really can. I mean, and the thing is, it's supposed to, like, give you a little pop without making you look like a different person. I love it. Okay, so we have a lucky adulting today. So Jenna's doing adulting for us. I would much rather hear from Jenna Lyons and hear from me. I'm going to be sitting over here while she's giving style advice. I'm going to have a high noon. That actually seems like the perfect partnership. I wonder if I could get Jenna Lyons to be my co-host. Anyways, uh, while I'm over here, I'm going to have a high noon. High noon is real vodka, seltzer, and a splash of real juice. It is just 100 calories. It's gluten-free. You can get it wherever alcohol is sold. It's in a delightful little yellow and blue can. My favorite is the peach. And if you feel like having a drink or wooing Jenna Lyons to be your co-host, go get a high noon today. Okay, these are Jenna's tips for easy ways to up your style game. Two things I always recommend are go bold, don't be shy. I think everyone just has a white room or a light gray room. And the fact of the matter is, especially when you have a smaller space or if you want to create some drama, like the only thing that can really do that is drama. So like try going dark, like actually don't be scared. This is my hallway. Yes, 
It's dark green. I know it might be intimidating, but everyone that comes over is like, oh, that's so cool. And part of the reason it's cool is just because it's dramatic. The other thing is like, put your lights on a dimmer. Don't use your overhead lights, like light candles and you get table lamps, floor lamps, like get the light off the ceiling. As soon as you have light on the ceiling, it makes the space feel kind of cheap. Um, I know that sounds crazy, but it can really, you know, it can really just feel like flat and it comes down over your head. It's not as flattering. Um, it just doesn't feel as elevated. So that's a really simple, easy way to make your space feel a little bit more special. That's it for today's episode. If you haven't already, leave us a rating, give us a review, send us your questions, leave us a message, do whatever you want with us. You can join our Facebook group. You can sign up for our newsletter, which is called Things You Missed. Uh, and you can tune in to listen to us or watch us on YouTube next Thursday. I'm at EK Nardini. Token CEO is on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn, YouTube, and Facebook. See you next Thursday. <laughs> <laughs>